Thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity to come here and uh, present what probably is the uh, largest innovation to air traffic control since the introduction of radar. I will start by showing you where we all started this some uh, 10 years ago. So bear with me while I give, show you a little bit of a movie here for 20 seconds. So in uh, Örnsköldsvik, in the north of Sweden, we have, uh, together with our partner, Swedish Air Navigation Service Provider, LFV, introduced what we then called remote tower control. The controllers are actually not at that airport. They're somewhere else. In this particular case, they're some 150 kilometers away in what we call a remote tower center. What we do in the remote tower center is that we're displaying the outer tower window views on displays, which we capture with a camera mast that we have placed on the airport we're controlling. By doing this, I am 100% sure we are providing, we're able to provide air traffic control in a much more flexible and cost-effective and dynamic way, and basically we're enabling on-demand services for air traffic control. We're lowering the bar uh, and make it more available to small and regional airports that normally are not able to uh, absorb the cost for a conventional control service. Like it said in the movie, it took us nine years from idea to operational launch. That might, might sound to you like a long time, but please, this is not a webcam watching your dog. This is something else. It's a flight safety system that has to comply with a number of rules and regulation. And it has to work 365 days a year, 24 hours a day in all types of weather conditions. So on April 21st, 2015, we were all very proud at Saab and LFV, our partner. And it was a big day for our customers, and I would say to the whole air traffic control industry. When we inaugurated the first, the world's first approved air traffic control system that was controlled from remote. Today, we have gained some 4,000 hours of operational experience, which I think make us unique in the marketplace. But we don't, we don't stop here. The next step, what is really that? Remote Tower will evolve, and is already evolving, into what we call digital air traffic control. So what do we then mean by digital air traffic control? Well, like I said, we're, we're having the camera mast that is capturing the outer tower window. We're replacing the tower windows, basically, with displays. We're creating a heads-up environment for the air traffic controllers. We introduce new functionality, like tracking in the displays. We have la radar labels on the displays. We have alerting. We have meteorological information. We can also add other types of functionality which is not air traffic control related. All that set aside, I think the game changer is really the flexibility these systems provide. An air traffic controller does not no longer be, need to be at the specific airport we're controlling. And it can control more than one airport at the same time either through switching between different airports or controlling two to three airports simultaneously. Resources will then be centralized and can be more effectively utilized. 
We're also introducing a mobile uh, air traffic control tower. Uh, so for example, we can meet event-driven demand. I believe this is a complete disruption to this industry. But the disruption is not the video reproduction in itself. It, it's the flexibility and the mobility. So in aviation today, though, the airports have become the bottlenecks in the transport system. We're addressing that as well with this digitalized air traffic control. When we pair the digitalized air traffic control with our, with our airport operations management tools, that takes us into digitalized air traffic management. And then we're addressing the bigger airports. So for those of you who were standing here thinking that we're only addressing the small and regional airports, no, we're going for the big ones as well. What if all the stakeholders at an airport are able to see the exact same things as the controllers in the tower? We believe that we can enable a capacity improvement by doing this. How many times haven't we as travelers heard the captain come on the speaker system saying that uh, due to our early arrival ahead of scheduled arrival time, there is no gate crew, and the bags cannot be off offloaded. Like there is a surprise to everybody at that airport, except for the controllers, that we have arrived early. What if we can put all the stakeholders in one room, providing the same situational awareness as the controllers have? We're absolutely certain that this is a disruptive innovation to this industry. And I keep coming back to this disruptive, and I actually had to go out on the internet and check what do we actually mean by disruptive innovation. And the term was defined in 1995 by a Harvard professor, Clayton M. Christensen. And he said, a disruptive innovation is an innovation that creates a new market and eventually disrupts an existing market, displacing established market leaders and alliances. I think we've all seen his, uh, examples in history before, uh, where new, new technological innovations have completely changed the business landscape. And it always, always results in some sort of business transformation. At Saab, we're certain that the ATM industry will undergo the exact same evolutions evolution when towers become digitalized. So I think it's the time has come when we can bury the air traffic control towers. The towerless airport has arrived. There's no longer a business case for building traditional brick and mortar uh, control towers. We believe the towerless airport uh, is a digital airport. And if you for a minute have any doubt what I've been telling you the last couple of minutes, please come and visit us. Seeing is believing. Here at Farnborough, we're launching our mobile remote digital tower air traffic control. Thank you very much.